Red Hat has always had a really weird relationship with the rest of the FOSS world. They're a multi-billion dollar company with thousands of employees worldwide, but they don't make money selling proprietary software. Instead, they sell support and services for products like RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But outside of their own products, the Red Hat engineers do a lot of incredible work on the Linux kernel, on GNOME, and a bunch of other software that many of us use on a day-to-day -day basis. But there is a pretty big problem with trying to sell free code. It's free code. So anybody out there could make a one-to-one -one compatible version of your distro. Classically, if you didn't want to use RHEL, instead you would use CentOS at least before its untimely demise. Nowadays though, there are things like Alma Linux, a spiritual successor to CentOS, or you have things like Rocky Linux, literally created by one of the co-founders of CentOS. And I guess most people on the desktop space kind of forget about this, but there is also Oracle Linux. And recently Red Hat shared a post that got a lot of people kinda worried, furthering the evolution of CentOS Stream. The title by itself, doesn't sound that crazy. The content, on the other hand, well, you'll see. As the CentOS Stream community grows and the enterprise software world tackles new dynamics, we want to sharpen our focus on CentOS Stream as the backbone of enterprise Linux innovation. We are continuing our investment in and increasing our commitment to CentOS Stream. But this is the important part. CentOS Stream will now be the sole repository for public RHEL-related source code releases. For Red Hat customers and partners, source code will remain available via the Red Hat customer portal. As the CentOS Stream community grows and the enterprise software world tackles new dynamics, we want to sharpen our focus on CentOS Stream as the backbone of enterprise Linux innovation. We are continuing our investment in and increasing our commitment to CentOS Stream. But this is the important part. CentOS Stream will now be the sole repository for public RHEL related source code releases. For Red Hat customers and partners, source code will remain available via the Red Hat customer portal. Before I can explain the implications of this, I need to explain what CentOS Stream is. Because while it does use the CentOS website, while it does use the CentOS name, CentOS Stream is not at all similar to original CentOS. So original CentOS is basically what Rocky Linux is today. It is a one-to-one -one compatible version of RHEL. It is downstream of RHEL. Instead, RHEL is the downstream of CentOS Stream. CentOS Stream is basically a pre-release or a beta for the next version of RHEL. As described on the Red Hat website, what is CentOS Stream? When you use CentOS Stream, you benefit by gaining early access to the same source code Red Hat developers and engineers use to produce the next version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The platform provides a continuous stream of content, making CentOS Stream a preview of future Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases. Think of it kind of similar to Debian SID, where Debian SID is the unstable version of Debian. The packages in Debian SID will eventually make their way into the next release of Debian. This relationship between CentOS Stream and RHEL has not always existed. Obviously, because CentOS Stream hasn't always existed, but the first version of RHEL with CentOS Stream as the upstream was RHEL 9. In the words of Red Hat, why make this change? Before CentOS Stream, as in when it was still CentOS, Red Hat pushed public sources for RHEL to git.centos.org. There is nothing special about this. This is just a Git repo containing everything inside of RHEL. When the CentOS project shifted to center on CentOS Stream, as in when original CentOS was being killed off, we maintained these repositories even though CentOS Linux was no longer being built downstream of RHEL. The engagement around CentOS Stream, the engineering levels of investment, and the new priorities we're addressing for customers and partners now make maintaining separate, redundant repositories inefficient. The latest source code will still be available via CentOS Stream. This is a very important distinction. Red Hat customers and partners can access real sources via the customer and partner portals in accordance with their subscription agreement. Also very important. What this last bit is saying going forward, if you want to access the RHEL source code, you must be either a Red Hat customer 
or a red hat partner. Now initially, this does sound really bad, and I'll get to some of the really bad later in the video, but there are some things here that aren't as bad as they seem. So as an individual just random developer out there, let's say you watching this video wants to go and access the RHEL source code, you can get a free developer account from Red Hat, access RHEL, access the RHEL source code, no problem whatsoever. For you as a random person, nothing changes except for the fact that it's not using the CentOS Git server. One thing you may be thinking is, doesn't this violate the GPL? Like, how can Red Hat have RHEL, which makes use of all of this GPL code, and then basically put all that code behind another license, making it so that certain people cannot access the code? Isn't the whole point of free software so that everybody out there can access and modify the source code? Not exactly, but it is certainly the way that a lot of people misinterpret it. So point three of GPL v2, you may copy and distribute the program or a work based on it under section two in object code or executable form under the terms of sections one and two above, provided that you also do one of the following. There is no section here that says the source code must be in a public Git repo that anybody can access. They can distribute it from their website if they want to, also, if they don't distribute the program to you, they don't have to give you the source code. Basically, no binary, no source code. The reason most people just use a public Git repo is it's just easier. Whilst there's basically no effect on the individual, when it comes to distros like Alma Linux and Rocky Linux, and I guess also Oracle Linux, but no one's going to really shed a tear if Oracle loses some money, it's unclear what the effect is going to be. Firstly, while CentOS Stream is absolutely the upstream of RHEL, and RHEL is absolutely the downstream of CentOS Stream, that doesn't mean that everything that makes its way into RHEL was once in CentOS Stream. The same relationship exists with things like the Linux kernel, where you have the Torvalds kernel, but then distros will have things like the Ubuntu Linux kernel and the Arch Linux kernel, where additional patches are added. The same thing happens to RHEL. Sometimes additional security patches are added, so what you see in CentOS Stream doesn't one for one line up. For most of us desktop Linux users, this discrepancy doesn't really matter. If you updated Arch Linux a week ago, and I updated it today, the versions are going to be different, there's going to be different patches, and that might cause minor issues here and there, but most of what we want to do is going to work exactly the same way. But that's not the point. The point of Alma Linux and Rocky Linux isn't to be one for one compatible with CentOS Stream. It is to be patch for patch, bug for bug, identical to what RHEL is offering. In a corporate environment where you want complete control of everything that's running, this can be a massive selling point. And unless the goal is to shift to being one to one compatible with CentOS Stream, these distros basically have no reason to exist. That is just one way to interpret the statement. It says, RHEL related source code releases. This could mean everything included in RHEL, or this could mean just what is in CentOS Stream. Right now, that is also unclear. But there is a whole separate problem that affects whether these distros can even exist. Over on Twitter, a user called Elliot Spencer had a question for Alma Linux. Hello, any comments on IBM slash Red Hat decision to cut off free access to Git? Are you going to join forces with Rocky to buy at least one license for access, or you have one license already? Alma Linux responds by saying, having a license would not help. Part of the license agreement restricts you from building your own rebuild with the source. We are working on gathering information and formulating a plan. And they have written a blog post saying basically what the plan is here. Impact of RHEL changes to Alma Linux. Last week, one of our Build SIG members noticed that some updates of Red Hat 8 hadn't been published to the Git repo, like they were supposed to be. They assumed it was a bug and opened a report appropriately. But as the days went on with no resolution, we knew something was up. This morning, we got our answer. Basically what was said over in the blog post. This is the report here if you want to go and read it for yourself. This change means that we as builders of a real clone will now be responsible for following the licensing and agreements that are in place around Red Hat's interfaces, in addition to following the licenses included in the software sources. Unfortunately, the way we understand it today, 
Red Hat's user interface agreement indicate that republishing sources acquired through the customer portal would be a violation of those agreements. As you can tell, I am not a lawyer, and Red Hat has a lot of them. I don't know how you can apply extra restrictions onto these licenses, stopping someone from going and building a clone of the distro. They could definitely do that with the code they write themselves. But when it comes to everything else, I don't see how that's possible. Does this mean I won't be getting security patches for my Alma Linux OS server? No. In the immediate term, our plan is to pull from the CentOS stream updates and Oracle Linux updates to ensure security patches continue to be released. These updates will be carefully curated to ensure they are one-to-one -one compatible with RHEL, while not violating Red Hat's licensing, and will be vetted and tested just like all our other releases. And is Red Hat trying to kill downstream clones? A lot of people on Twitter certainly believe so, but we cannot speak to Red Hat's intentions and can only point to the things they have said publicly. That is what I'm going to do as well. We have had an incredible working relationship with Red Hat through the life of Ulma Linux OS and we continue to see that happen. Basically, um, go ask Red Hat what they're trying to do, we cannot read their minds. Rocky Linux also has their own post, but they take a slightly different stance. Rocky Linux expresses confidence despite Red Hat's announcement. Rocky Linux, a prominent community-driven open source distribution of enterprise Linux, remains confident in its ability to continue as a bug-for-bug -bug compatible and freely available alternative to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, despite changes in accessibility. While this decision does change the automation we use for building Rocky Linux, we have already created a short-term mitigation and are developing the longer-term strategy. There will be no disruption or change for any Rocky Linux users, collaborators, or partners. The way that I interpret this is they don't think the license can supersede the code license. Maybe there's something else that they're doing on the back end. Maybe they are working with Red Hat. I don't know. But it seems like they have a lot more of a hopeful stance than Ulma Linux does. Now, just to clarify one thing, not long after that original Red Hat blog was made, Glorious Eggroll on Twitter made a giant Twitter thread basically saying, Anybody out there can get a free developer license for Red Hat, download the source code, and build a clone of RHEL. He has since retracted the entire thread because he didn't know Alma Linux's stance and didn't want to keep spreading misinformation around. Honestly, I have no idea how this is going to play out in the long run. I think the best thing to do is wait until the dust settles and wait and see what Ulma Linux and Rocky Linux end up actually doing. If they do manage to find a plan going forward to keep the distros going, that's great, it's not a problem. If they can't, well, then we'll have to see what we need to do. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a real customer? Do you make use of Alma Linux or Rocky Linux? Do you have no idea if you should be swapping to something else? I know some people out there have been swapping over to Debian-based systems because that seems, you know, better for the long run now. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Red Hat, probably, maybe bad? I'm not sure.